Hey there friends at Michigan Tech, my name is Steve Day and I just wanted to send you a quick video to show you how to put together the sensors we sent you. So there are four main parts to the sensors. The uh, first part is the actual hall sensor itself um, and you can see it's actually in the holder already. Um, it's not glued in or anything like that, you can pop it out, resolder any of the wires you might need to. It's just a really snug fit so I figured I'd leave it that way. Next we have the uh, whisker wire holder and um, I'll show you how to connect everything to that in just a moment. Um, next we have the Galfinol whisker itself and finally we have the biasing magnet and you probably can't see it but you'll be able to see it when we send it to you. Um, first thing you want to do is connect the whisker holder to the sensor holder. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. There are holes that match up and line up that you can just Put right on top of each other. Um, you'll want the uh, nub to be on the uh, same side as the sensor and all you have to do is take the screws that we will also send you and thread those in there. And uh, pardon the downtime while I thread them in myself. And to tighten them you'll want to use a 7 ths Allen wrench. Um, so when you're tighten, tightening these, um, you do want to be careful because it is plastic and it could strip it, but the weird thing is um, they've actually been holding a lot better than I thought. You can actually put a decent amount of torque on there because uh, you, you do want it pretty snug. Um, next, you want to take the biasing magnet, and I usually use my Allen wrench or just whatever ferromagnetic tool I have next to me. Uh, you can actually see the magnet there. It's just a tiny little magnet. Um, and if you look at the bottom of your sensor holder, there are a bunch of little holes that the magnet will fit into. Um, and I made multiple of these for testing purposes, purposes to see which would give us our best signal. And if you can see, there are two little black dots in the two holes that will give you the best signal. And that should be around 100 to 120 volts. I'm sorry, 100. 100 to 120 millivolts. So not a huge signal, but we can, um, it's definitely enough for what we need. So uh, all you want to do is take it, slide it in there, and then slide away your tool so it stays in. Um, next, you want to take your whisker and actually slide it into the whisker holder. Um, the whisker holder splits open like so. Um, I usually just use my finger as kind of a fulcrum to to split it open. Uh, you probably want to slide it in kind of high because the magnet will attract to the whisker uh, and you know it's just a pain in the neck if it if gets stuck to it on the way back and then you gotta deal with that. But Then you slide it down and the magnet will come up to meet the whisker but um, you know you just gotta play with it till you get it in there. Uh, now I mean for me I, I always usually have the whisker go all the way to the back backstop of the uh, holder and you want the whisker to be touching the surface of the magnet and the hall sensor at the same time. Um, I mean, the closer you get it to the hall sensor, the better the signal will come out. But, um, I mean, and it should be about to where you can't really see uh, a gap in between the hall sensor and the whisker. So then, you want to take the last screw and just put it in the big hole in the knob. Once again, tighten it down. And this one, you you want tight as snug as well because it's going to hold the whisker wire in place while you're bending it. Um, yeah, like I said, those rivets are, or those threads are holding better than I thought. So now you have three wires coming out. You've got your five volt power, which provides your supply power to the uh, hall sensor. You've got your reading, which gives you your output reading from the hall sensor. And you've got a ground wire that is actually a shared ground wire between them. So once again, that color code is red was, is our um, supply voltage, black is our reading voltage, and green is our ground. Um, and those are all marked here. And while we're at it, uh, feel free to change those color codes. Uh, when I was hooking them up, I realized I probably could have chosen a better one. Um, it's your sensor. You guys feel free to hook up uh, whatever you want. So now I'm going to try and see if I can show you um, what it looks like when it is hooked up. So I'm going to plug in my 5 volt power. 
Sorry, I'm just doing. Sorry, I need to. Alrighty, my uh, ground. And then my reading. So I, I have this just running on a LabVIEW program, or uh, VI, and I can, I'll can send you guys the VI uh, in case you want it for testing purposes. I uh, realize you're probably going to write all your own stuff, uh, but this is what ours looks like for now. Um, okay, so as you can see, we have the, uh, the signal coming through, and it's just on an auto-scaling axis. Um, when I bend it this way, you get your signal, your reading. See, it's getting uh, about yeah, about 100 volts. Um, I'm sorry, 100 millivolts. Wish we were getting 100 volts. Um, so you will see things like hysteresis in the signal. It won't always come back to the last place it was at. But once again, for us, that's not a big deal. We're just wanting to know whether the whisker is moving, not necessarily if, um, or we're not necessarily calibrating any flows or anything like that. So. That is the video, and hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email us or call us at any time. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.